Hey everyone, I think we are live here. We have Aurora is visiting. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. And I appreciate you guys joining me here today. Uh, we'll, we'll give everybody a chance to um, kind of visit with us here before we get started. Um, how's the sound, Aurora? Does it sound good to you today? Sandy, how about you? How's the sound? Hey, Aurora. I know there's a little bit of a delay. So, hey, Sandy. What I'd like to do today is uh, draw this statue. I've been doing a lot of portraits. Okay, the sound is excellent. Good, good, good. Now, we have Aurora, and then I know you told me um, how to pronounce your name, Aura, A. You are a Michael. Hey, Michael from Germany. Ruka. Okay, good. Yeah, the sound last week. Um, what my drawing is on is on a Cintiq screen, and uh, my microphone was plugged into my Cintiq screen, but I turned the Cintiq screen off, thus turning off the microphone last week. So, yeah, that was not good. Okay, perfect. Um, so... Aura, there, there's Aurora Bloom, okay, and then there's Aura Polnar. Am I saying your, hey, Ileana, am I saying your name right, A-U-R-A? -A? I know you, we talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago, but I, my memory is just terrible. Carmela here in the Woodlands, Texas. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Um, Okay, so let, let me get started. I, I, I'll answer it as, as we go. We'll, we'll chat as we go. I have a new setup here, and hopefully it, it, it'll work out good. So what I'd like to do today in this, um, in this live stream is to just uh, draw this statue. Now, um, what I'll do for members of the site, okay, good, thank you, Sandy, is I'll post the photo reference. The photo reference is actually already up on the website. It's in the light sources uh, course, but this is a, a recent photograph that I took. Now, I took the liberties in, in the photo um, of getting rid of all the people in the background. Uh, so let Jesse's here as well. Okay, yes. Aura. Okay, cool. So um, there were a lot of people in the background of the photo, okay? And I eliminated them last night. I just kind of painted on top of them in Photoshop. You can probably see a uh, faint kind of... Um, shadows back there but I wanted to keep it very simple for you so I'm not doing life drawing with the figure now there's no school there's no nothing so I want to keep my figure drawing chops up to snuff and the best way to do that is by drawing statues and um, if you go I, I talk about this all the time if you go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and you visit um, you just kind of go to the little magnifying glass and you type in marble statue or American wing I think that's going to be really beneficial for you because there are so many statues. And they do have a pretty decent um, photo of this statue there. And then um, the, the, t the title of the statue is called Fragilina. And I don't have the name of the sculpture in front of me. I'll put that in the notes after the, the, the live stream. So let me get started here. Again, I'm not using anything fancy. I put the materials list uh, in, in the description below. I, I don't think I'm going to use the brush on this drawing. I want to kind of keep it fresh, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about some figure drawing techniques, okay? So this is the, the, a sketch that I just did, just to kind of loosen up my hand. I'll start from scratch for you, uh, but I, I wanted to do this just to loosen up and to kind of show you the, the proper way that I should start. Uh, the proper way that I should start is right here on this line. This is our first uh, opposite letter C, okay? And then right after that line, I should immediately go over to this opposite C right here. And what that does is it immediately uh, gives me rhythm. Can you repeat what you said? I missed it. Uh, it was just all about um, this, drawn from this statue is, is really the, the best way um, to practice when we don't have uh, a life drawing class right now. There's no life drawing classes anywhere. And, you know, drawing from photos is, is what we have and drawing from our imagination, unless you have a figure drawing model 
uh, in your home that you can access at any given time, this is the next best uh, way to practice. So when I start this drawing, technically what I should do is I should start with this opposite C, and then I should go over to the stomach area, the lower abs, and opposite C, and then I should come over to the butt area, the hip, right over here, opposite C, and then I should come over here to the top of her leg, opposite C. That's how I should start this drawing. So let's, um, I'll come back to this one periodically. I'll show you some techniques on, on top of this one. Now, there's a, uh, actually before I start, there's a different way to start, and I kind of like this way more and more as I draw more and more. Hey, Joseph, Jesse. Um, what I like to do is I like to start from an area that looks first. Like I just did a coaching session with uh, Yu Wan from all the way in Seattle, Washington, and we were talking about best places to start. Best places to start are what looks easiest first. So for me, this looks really easy right over here. So I'll look at the distance from the bottom of the breast to maybe where the um, pelvis starts right over there, and that would be my home base. So let's get started, okay? Let me move this off to the side. Let me tape it over here, okay? And let me get, so, I, yeah. So it's important that you don't let your pencils go too small. So this pencil is too small. And what happens when your pencil gets really small like this is that you start to lose the balance of the pencil, okay? You know, I, I've been using, I've been sharpening my pencils pretty far down. Once they get to this point, I, I, I don't really use them that much anymore. I give them to my kids and, and they use them. Uh, but it's better to draw with a longer pencil because there's more balance in, in, in the longer pencil. It's hard for me to explain, but it's really a feeling in your hand. Okay, so all I did, uh, no cheating here, I just put two marks for the camera to focus on. Okay, and I also wanted to put two marks here so I don't bore you to death trying to get the drawing to fit into the, the live area that I have. Now, so um, let's start. So I'm going to start right here. Okay, this could be... Now, I, you need to relax. Your first lines, like, my hands are a little tense right now. I want to do a really good job for you guys. I want to do a good job for myself. I, I don't want to struggle. So the first few draw, uh, lines that you put down, you really want to try to, to relax as, as much as possible. So uh, first line, and that first line really is going to be about placement. So um, I'm pointing at the photo here. Um, I, I have a pencil extender, and... Uh, yeah, a wonderful student uh, bought me a whole bunch of them. I don't use them that much, but a pencil extender is just this thing that you could, um, hold on now, put the pencil into, and yeah, and it extends it, and uh, it's pretty cool. And some people don't aren't fickle about you know that. I, I, I should try it a little bit more, but I, I just don't. They're really good. So... Dan brought me a whole bunch of those, and I was really appreciative. So opposite C. And if I make a mistake here, it's no big deal because that side of the statue is in shadow. Now I look at that, and I, I look at my paper. Am I going to have enough room for her head and her arms? Yes. Uh, am I going to have enough room for her legs and her feet? Absolutely, yes, I will. So now I want to come over to the other side, which is going to be her stomach like we just talked about. And this is the skinny part of her waist. So um, that's going to be my width right over there. Okay, so I'm going to immediately get my width, do that opposite C right into the, um, the pelvis. Okay, and now I can come on in and do this other opposite C, which is going to be her hip. And I'm looking when I do this, do I have enough room for the feet? Okay, because a, a lot of people have uh, issues with fitting the drawing onto the paper. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm really taking my time with these first initial lines because these first initial lines will enable me to fit the figure onto the paper. Now, I don't want to get too stuck here. I want to immediately do my other opposite C, which is going to be this all the way down to her knee. And then I'm going to just gesture... So these are very light lines, gesture all the way down to her feet, okay? These lines are, are not meant to be perfect. They're just for placement, okay? Now, I could zoom all the way up. So I'm looking at my reference. She's got a really tall torso. I could zoom all the way up and, and start the opposite C at her elbow. Where is her elbow in relationship to this line? 
okay? Where is uh, this line in relationship to that line? So those are just for marks to put down on a paper. They look really stiff. They're really ugly. You know, the, the idea here is before you start to draw, so if we go back to this thing, um, the idea here is to, before you start, practice these opposite Cs. So opposite C, opposite C. So see how much looser this is? It's so much looser because I don't care. So this is how I would be drawing it if I didn't care. I'd just be very, very loose and scribbly. So maybe let me try to not care so much, okay? So now, once I put those placement lines down, I'm going to start with my home base. So home base is going to be right about here, okay? And now, once I do those placement lines, I just I, I want to have some fun here. I, I don't want to be so perfect with it. I want to just... Um, start to draw what looks easy to draw. I want to do a little bit of continuous line. Okay, I'm going to, this is my home base. I'm looking at uh, distance from the navel to the breast. Okay, so this is called uh, kind of spiraling out from the center. So I want to do something like that. I want to do a little bit here in the center with the breast. Okay, and now I'm going to come back to my original opposite C. I want to think about the breast wrapping around the cylinder. So I'm immediately starting to think about the cylinder of the torso. Okay. Now this comes down. I'm going back here. And it's okay if, if I make a lot of mistake lines right now. I'm going to just kind of either erase them or turn them into background tone. Um, and now I'm just going to do continuous line all the way down. If I can just loosen up a little bit here today, Matt. Now don't get stuck in one area. Let's just... Um, bring this down. The hip is not perfectly round, so use your continuous line. Now, this can all be accomplished with angles, okay? And I'm looking at these legs together. I am not looking at them separately. Okay, so let's look at this together all the way down. And I could actually keep going with this flowy line. All righty. Now, I'm not worried about her arms just yet. I'm coming back to home base, back to home base. Um, I'm going to check that eraser first to see if it's not all dried out because that would not be cool. It would ruin the paper. Okay, now I'm going back. I know this is a very slow way to draw, but I want to go back and, and I, could, I could see myself here trying to get this little section correct. So now I'm, I'm drizzling in a little bit of angles. Okay, one side note. Look at my ruler. So let's just kind of get a sense of where we're at. So the top, so we're about a nine inch figure. On my life drawing uh, pad, which is 18 by 24 inches, this really should be like 15 inches tall. This is really small for a life drawing situation. Uh, this is good for drawing for YouTube and, and drawing here in my studio because it's manageable in, in this time. But quite frankly, like when you draw this way, you want to use your arm. You don't want to be drawing just with your fingers when you're doing this type of technique with the opposite seas. So just to put things into context, you see the distortion in the ruler, how it's smaller over here and it's wider over here. So we have distortion with the camera, and I just kind of want to give you guys an idea of how, how big this is. Okay, so I've got my torso. She's really tall and, and really skinny. And quite frankly, you know, I have a target here for where I think her feet are. And I have a target here where I think her elbow is. So um, maybe now what I can do is just think about placing this arm. So now I want to utilize what? I want to utilize negative space. Let me resharpen. Okay. Because I really like a sharp pencil when I do this. So I want to get in a little bit of negative space. And I can see I might have to drop the breast. Okay. So let me drop this. Okay, let me drop that again. I'm not worried about making mistakes. So now I'm glancing at this little itsy bitsy negative space. Okay, so I'm gonna kick this out. I know um, I'm being a bit kind of anal with this. I, I really wanna get this right because this is gonna be the whole pose, 
Now what I need to do is I need to lower the breast, which kind of makes sense, right? Because this breast is higher than this one because it's foreshortened a little bit, her figure. We're looking up at her ever so slightly, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that breast, and I'm not worried about my mistake lines. Those can erase out very easily. Okay, so we drop that breast, and I'm looking at the distance from the bottom of the breast to right about here. It's, it's fairly short. So dropping that arm, I'm glad that I put that arm in because sometimes I would just draw the torso and that torso out of context, not so good. Hey, Anna, how are you? Okay, so now easy uh, peasy. I can just kind of use a circular eraser stroke. And okay, is that going to erase out 100%? Mm, maybe not. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I could come on in here uh, with this and really try to push down on it. Uh, so I have to, you know, be careful with this eraser. It feels a little dry. So I'm not going to concern myself with that right now. I'm going to kind of keep going, okay? And I want to come back down this one more time. And now we'll branch out because I'm starting to get too much over there. So let's branch out. And let's get down to the pelvis area, and let's establish where this light is on her leg. So we have beautiful sunlight hitting this marble statue. Okay, once again, the torso is long, very long torso. And squint, wrap around. Now let's just do a little bit here on the inside. So now I, I mentioned in the description that a big part of today was really going to be about the line that separates. And that's what I'm really attempting to do right now. Attempting here is the key word. Okay, so rib and then another rib. Okay, relax, loosen up your hand. Don't be so perfect with it. Okay, now I'm going to come on down to the oblique. So I'm trying my very best to draw this line that separates the light from the dark. Every once in a while, lean back. And let's just keep going with that line that separates. Let's go up all the way up to the underarm area, pectoralis muscle. Now, the reason why I want to get that in is what is right below this line up over here at her shoulder. So what is right below that? Let's hold the pencil up and be the real artist. What is right below that line? It's right about here, okay? So not, not bad. You just want to glance at that two seconds. So let's, let's just separate um, the legs here just very lightly with a big, opposite C, long line. Cool. Good. Okay, now that tells me I need to widen the hip. So you see what I'm doing here? I really, really like to draw the torso and the legs, the upper legs first with just, this is called a target line and a target line. Now I have another page right over here, if I can share this with you very quickly. Okay, so this was for a coaching session yesterday. And same type of thing. So I, I start with the torso and I start with the legs, okay? And then I just put a couple of lines for where I think the head is. I'm not going to start with the head. Now, it, if you have another teacher that you're following and then they say, that's crazy, you should always start with the head, that's fine. You know, there's no right and there's no wrong. You have to do what is really, truly best for you, okay? Just because I like to start with the torso, maybe that's not going to work for you. Maybe you have to start with the head and you like that rhythm going all the way down. So I like to start with the torso. I like to look at the negative spaces and I like to suggest where the feet are and where the head is. And I did it over here as well on the, on the coach and drawing where I just put that oval in for the head very quickly. Uh, just a quick line over here at the bottom that connects the feet. Okay. So this is important. And uh, again, there's probably, I'm not going to say hundreds, but there's dozens of ways for you to do a figure drawing. A lot of it depends on how much time you have to actually draw. Now, when I put in this line here for the line that separates the light from the dark on the breast and I lean back, I notice that this needs to be kicked out, okay? Now, earlier I said, okay, if, if I do that and it's not correct, not a problem. It's going to be my tone 
for the background, okay? I'm just gonna kick this out a little bit and then her scapula over here. I'm not concerned about perfection right now. Now her shoulder, wow, it's way up there. It's way up there. So I'm gonna just uh, once again suggest at this point in the game, I could um, suggest a couple of more body parts, like I could suggest this arm, which looks really big, by the way. Look at how big that wrist looks. Doesn't it look very huge compared to her torso? Wrists are usually really skinny. Now, who am I to second guess this sculptor, who's an amazing sculptor? Uh, anybody who could do something like this is unbelievably, incredibly talented. Uh, but remember, even the artists in the museum, at a museum like the Metropolit Metropolitan Museum of Art, are human beings, and all human beings are flawed. So even somebody who showcased in the museum, the Met, uh, could make mistakes, because we're all human. All right, so what I'm trying to do here is uh, draw her neck, okay? So I'm, I'm looking at this compartment so we have the line that separates right over here going. It's her pectoralis muscle, her chest muscle, okay? And then it comes down, and then it goes around the breast. So now this is her arm, her deltoid area, the beginnings of it. Let me just kind of tape this up because I'm going to want to show you that again. Okay, blue tape is my best friend. I love this stuff, okay? You, you, and you have to get the right blue tape. It's quite expensive. Um, this blue tape, Scotch blue, uh, it's it's awesome, and they have different varieties of it. Uh, this is just the general one, or or it's called original. Okay, they have delicate surfaces and all that, but the original is just fine. It doesn't stick. It, it it's just it's my best friend in the studio. I use it all the time. So let's come back over here and try to get this neck. And just a suggestion for her hair which is just a small triangular shape, and I can tell that it's a little bit too high. Uh, so let, let's just kind of glance at where her elbow is, and I hold my pencil up, and I measure. The elbow is really much to the left of her breast. So you see that little line that I just put up top over there? That's just a simple little target. Okay, so I'm just going to go to that, suggest, and I, I'm not going to draw her upper arm and her lower arm separately. I want to draw her upper arm and her lower arm together. So I'm just going to, that's just a gesture. So that's all I'm going to do right now for the arm, because quite frankly, I don't know where I'm going to take this drawing here today on the live stream. Uh, and I don't know how long I want to draw it here today with it, but I do know that I want to suggest it with very light line, okay? And if I do an angle over here, this angle's very much so. So in, in a, how long have we been doing the live stream? Okay, so the live stream right now is about 23 minutes. So chit-chatting a little bit. So uh, this is about a 20-minute sketch with all the verbiage that, I, that I'm giving you guys here. Uh, and so this is what I would do in, in 20 minutes. Now, remember, uh, you don't have to outline everything. Press down super... Uh, easy on your pencil in the early stages of the game. So what you want to practice drawing is, and I'm not going to be able to do it here today. I'll try. So you just want to practice light circles, light circles, light circles, light circles. So those lines, I'm barely pressing down hard. Now, um, hey, Soul Contras, I hope I said your name. YouTube didn't put the stream in my subscriptions. I had to get here through my email. Just uh, that's weird because I, I set up the stream last night. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to check that and you check. Make sure that you're subscribed and your notifications are turned on. Uh, all right, so now let's um, adjust her hips. Okay, I sound like a chiropractor. Let's adjust the hips. This hip needs to be wider. Cool. And this is where. You have to practice continuous line. I'm trying not to lift my pencil off the page. I'm looking at the thickness of the line, continuous line. Okay, cool. Now, listen, I'm not making up any mistakes, to uh, any excuses uh, today for my shaky hands. 
Um, recently, I've been diagnosed with a couple of herniated discs in my neck, and these herniated discs put pressure. I'm learning all this new anatomy stuff. It's actually really, really cool. It's not cool that I have this, but it's cool that I'm learning new stuff. Um, so these discs actually put pressure on the nerves um, if they're out of place and they're herniated like I have that go to your hands. Lucky me. So now I have like shaky thumb. So hopefully I can this will go away and uh, I won't need surgery at least for another five to six years. That would be ideal. But I tell you, I, I just absolutely hate this um, shakiness. I've never had this before in my life, and it really is an awful feeling. Okay, so getting old, uh, I'm going to say, in some ways, sucks. <laughs> Been doing this practice for three days for 30 to 60 minutes per day. Nice. Air, Aries, Padilla. All right. Nice, man. Um, I, I think that's a really good thing to do to practice for uh 30 minutes a day. Uh, if, if you don't have that time, well, you know, 10 minutes a day will, will, will really help to retain your eye-hand coordination. So let's see here. Let, let's, um, let me start over now at this home base. Let me resharpen my pencil. Okay. And um, let's just fix certain things here. So I am going to put in a little shadow over there. I'm going to wrap up with a convex line. I'm going to come down a little bit more straight and plumb, and then I'm going to roll in. Hey, Luke. How are you, man? I'm going to roll in over here, and then I'm going to wrap around, and we have this line right over here that goes down to the pelvis, and right over here, pelvis area. So I'm just adjusting some measurements. Where is that navel? The navel is over here. The center line is very important. And let's fuss with, I'm looking at the distance from where her leg starts right over here. I'm looking at the distance from this side to the other side of her leg. Now we angle this way, but I'm not doing the angles. Look at the other thigh as you're drawing this leg monkey grip what's up man okay um how's it going luke okay line that separates the light from the dark this leg needs to be thicker so sometimes you just need to do these things on the interior of the the body because it's going to help you to figure out thicknesses so you see those lines that i've put down there those, we can call them mistake lines. If I wanted to shade, I could erase those out, but if I wanted to shade, I could shade those away, so to speak. Uh, okay, cool. Let's get this side of the breast. Keith Smith. Thanks, man. Keith Smith sounds like somebody that I went to high school with. Okay, where is this breast in relationship to that navel? So if I pull a line straight down, it's, it's right about over here. Okay, good. I want to be very light with this. We can lower, lower that. Cool. Just a touch. It wraps around and line that separates into a rib. Once again, let's just go over. So now I'm trying to get the thickness of the light, which needs to be skinnier. So this needs to come over. So these interior lines, this line that separates the light from the dark, it's very important, okay? A lot of people have a hard time seeing this line in the reference that they choose if they go on Google or they're drawing in the classroom and there's not a distinct light source hitting the model or the photo that you chose on Google Images or on Pinterest, wherever you are finding, look at the distance from where this is to the edge of her other side of her body. There's no light and shade or it's soft light. It's, it's, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, this is really very beneficial when you are learning how to draw, to draw with the right photo reference that will enable you to see all of this good stuff. The good stuff is 
the line that separates the light from the dark. Now, um, let me just, which eraser am I going to use here today? Let's use the good old trusty uh, kneaded eraser. So let me erase out some of my mistake lines. Okay, let me erase out a little bit over here, a little bit over here. Cool, a little bit over here. Now, um, here comes the fun part. Uh, I could leave it like this as angles with the line that separates. I, I can just spend a couple of hours doing all of these angles, and I could have fun doing that. Or I can start to shade. Now, I recommend that you put in a shape of tone. How, how, how long are we into the live stream? Half an hour. So I wouldn't, I would not wait a half an hour to put in a shape of value. Put my arms down here for a second, shake them out. I wouldn't wait that long to put in value. I, I would put it in early uh, because your brain is going to see proportions with shapes uh, more than with line. Okay, outlines are just like these little skinny things on the paper. So look at how I'm holding my pencil now. Okay, I like the action, but some of the photo references on there are frustrating because the light in is not clear, just like what you said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the light in here, uh, so this is a statue. Uh, the reason why I, I kind of chose this is it's summertime just about uh, here, and usually in the summertime I, I draw at the... Uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, like I have small group classes, three, four, five people, and we draw these statues, and uh, it's about uh, a little bit of talent and a lot of practice, okay, uh, because it talented people could be lazy, and uh, less talented people could be hardworking, and they will catch up to the talented people, so it, it's, it's not just about talent, uh, it's both, it's talent combined with practice and uh, practicing not just once every six months but consistently and then I, I really do feel what is the I'm just taking a break here from drawing for a second I really do feel that the most important thing to improve is um, having that one big goal okay so I, I say this over and over and over again I talk with people every single week on the phone doing the coaching and a lot of people get caught in practice mode and they don't have that big goal, and that big goal is to create a body of work, a portfolio, and that portfolio has to be geared towards something, uh, maybe a portrait uh, por portfolio, maybe a portfolio of um, dog portraits. I don't know, but yeah, so it's talent and practice need to be equal. You need to practice, but don't live in practice. You need to have that goal of creating a bigger body of work, uh, something creative besides just practicing, okay? Yeah, I, I, if you have absolutely no talent, it's going to take you a gazillion years to get good. If you have a little bit of talent, a lot of practice is just going to help you get there. Okay, so let's, um, let's shade. So I'm holding my pencil back here because I, I, it's a marble statue, right? And I see so many mistakes, my God. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to shade. I see a couple of mistakes. So the reason why I just chatted with you guys there a little bit and stopped drawing is in the classroom, and I know I've mentioned this, and, and guys, just bear with me. So I'm shading on a diagonal. Uh, bear with me if I'm very repetitive. Uh, these things really are very important. Sometimes um, repeating the same things over and over again is important because sometimes people don't hear it the first time. But for me... It's just huge to draw for 20 minutes and get up. I never draw longer than 20 minutes unless I'm listening to a concert on YouTube. I'm really into it. I'm having a good time. And even that's like a half an hour. I always get up. And I, I stopped drawing there for a couple minutes, but I didn't get up. And then I went back to the drawing with fresh eyes, and immediately I saw something was not right. Okay, so I'm just going to – this is called blocking in on the diagonal – and the value ratios of this very beautiful statue. It's a marble statue, and it is in a room with a light marble floor. The ceiling of the room is all glass. It's about five stories high, the ceiling. And so there's light bouncing everywhere. So I'm not gonna be putting any black on this statue. This is pretty dark, her underarm. 
her elbow is pretty dark. Because it's why? Because it's further away from the floor, the mo white marble floor that is bouncing light into everything. Uh, the accent down over here, where her feet touch the platform, the base, that's dark, but it's not black. So it's, am I going to stick to the value ratios 100%? No, I'm not. Am I going to put some black line in there? Yeah, you bet. I love. I already have it. I love line, and I don't care so much about doing a perfect tonal drawing with the value ratios. Okay, so I'm still holding my pencil back like this, and that needs to be wider. So just diagonal shading. I don't even have to outline this arm. What I can do right now is test the waters because this is so easy to erase. Let me um, erase one of my first initial lines with the breast that was wrong because it's very light in that. That's reflected light hitting her wrist. I've got an assignment to do of a statue, so this helps a lot. It's a standing statue. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm glad to be of help. It's just go slow in the beginning and start with what looks easiest to draw first, okay? Uh, there's no right and wrong in terms of how to draw. It's, um, it's practice in many, many different techniques, so you get used to different techniques, but ultimately um, each drawing is going to present a different challenge, and each challenge needs a different technique to uh, fight that challenge. And um, so every drawing I do could be a little different. And then there's also this other caveat that comes into the mix, which is your mood. What is your mood of the day? Do you feel like being a little loose with everything? Do you feel like you need to draw a little bit tighter? And then different techniques will, will accomplish that for you. Okay, now let me fix this. What do we have here? We have angles, and now we have tone. So this is the type of statue that you want to draw from. This is the type of lighting you want to try to use, not all the time, but a lot of the time. Why? Because we it's form light. So the front of her torso, the front of her leg, is catching light. And then the side is catching shadow. The side of her torso is catching shadow. So that is called form light. So this line that separates the light from the dark is where the front turns to the side. That's why we call it form light, because it promotes maximum form. Okay. Now, uh, is it like a must that you always draw from form light? No. But again, I always, always, always uh, use the caveat of when you are learning how to draw. And then you can start to say, okay, you know what? I'm getting a little bored of that formulaic form light. I don't want it to become a crutch because it, for a lot of artists, it does become a crutch. Like if you only draw from form light uh, and then you switch and you draw with no light, uh, you don't know how to draw. So some people use form light way too much and it becomes a crutch for them. And I was one of those people. Uh, I, yeah, I only used to draw with really good form light and then I had to draw without form light once and I crashed and burned and yeah, so I learned my lesson. Now, I'm going to drop the thickness of the shadow on the breast, which is going to change things up a little bit up top. Let's lighten that. Okay, so this is... Let me get the right going to wrap up and this wraps down so I'm looking at the thickness of her lat muscle area as I draw that line okay I'm just going to come on down now with a vertical pencil stroke why because it's just easier over there okay vertical pencil stroke over here and now I'm doing a scribbling pencil stroke because you see this side of her torso it's very light so that is light bouncing up into her body from the floor because uh, an enormous amount of sunlight is hitting this statue right now. And it's the sunlight is so strong, and it's bouncing everywhere. So that's why there's that beautiful reflected light over there. So I'm just dancing down. Now, here's another thing for you to take into consideration. There should be no straight lines as you now start to progress 
and, and make things look a little bit more uh, resolved. You want to try to eliminate straight lines. So our first lines maybe were a little bit more straight. Why? Because we were doing the angles technique. I think I get a little bit of talent and I work hard, but there is moments when you see those big artists work and you start questioning yourself. Yeah, that's normal to question yourself. Uh, it's okay to question yourself for a couple minutes, but you don't want to live there. Uh, you want to question yourself and then you're like, okay, yeah, they're better than me, whatever. Let me just kind of do my thing. And um, y you can't live in that place where you continually watch all these professional artists that are so good on Instagram and, and YouTube, and then you just get discouraged. Uh, yeah, you know, there just comes that time that uh, you turn the, all that stuff off, you turn Facebook off, you, you turn Instagram off, and you turn YouTube off, and you create. And you don't worry about that these other more talented people are doing their thing. You have to stop and then do your thing. So for instance here, I really don't like to go much longer than like an hour and a half with the live stream uh, just because it gets to be too much and um, you guys got to do your own thing. So you, you watch, you learn, and then you, you shut YouTube off or you shut Instagram off and create, just go create, okay? So let me branch out a little bit. So there's our quick torso, okay? We can just do a little suggestion of the center of the breast which needs to be moved over still, okay? And put a little bit of tone over here. So there's cast shadow. Something is cast in shadow. We can get the angle for the front of her knee. Lean back and look at it from far away. Uh, it, it, when, in, when in doubt, my philosophy is to make um, the legs longer, okay? I'd rather have them longer than shorter any day of the week. So there's that part of the base of the statue. Now, same thing. I'm going to look at the negative space from her butt, her hip, whatever you want to call it, to this. So I, I'm, I'm not drawing her legs separately. I'm not looking at her foot. I'm looking at the negative space. So get the heel. Where is that heel? That heel is to the right of her hip. Hmm. Okay. So let's see. Let me move that over. So everything counts. So I'm just going to draw this together. Yes, true, Michael. So I'm just suggesting that. Looks like her hip needs to be lowered. Let me resharpen. Okay, let me resharpen now and bring this down and her hamstring hangs gravity there's not too much gravity on a marble statue but you still want to infuse gravity which means you want things to droop droop the hamstring droop the hip our muscles are made out of uh, muscle and soft tissue, so they're going to be pulled down by gravity. Uh, this needs to be kicked out to the right. Kicked out to the right. So just for me doing that um, heel changed a couple things for me because I, I saw that the heel needed to be kicked out to the right. And now let's get this other heel and this foot looks so, so very small. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Okay, it's just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Maybe this could be less tilted, a little bit more level. So that's just blocking in that section. Okay, now let's go up top. Let me lower this paper. Bear with me as I do this. Hopefully I don't screw everything up here. Yeah, almost. Hold on now. Let's bring this down so I'm not reaching up. Cool. And I'll tape that. 
Again, blue tape is my best friend. Make sure it's, it's level and plumb. I don't want to have my paper crooked. That would not be cool. Now, um, this arm, let, let, let's deal with her upper body a little bit. Let's just block in. So there's this angle. Oh, I see, that's the top of her head. So I can envision the top of her head through her arm. Angle. Angle for the elbow. So I'm trying my very best here to draw the upper arm and the lower arm together. Gravity. Look at the negative space between this and this. Get a sense of how thick that arm is. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the key is to, um, Aries, is to get up every, in, in the beginning, um, you maybe even want to, you don't have to get up, but you want to lean back, lean back as far as you can, and look at it from far away, in after the first five minutes, and it's just super duper important to do at least one or two, what I would like to call top to bottom measurements. So you say to yourself, okay, um, in this particular drawing, what is right underneath? Let me go. Yeah, this is level. Um, what is right underneath where her underarm is? Is it touching the calf muscle? Do that. What is right below the edge of the breast? You have to do those big measurements. Which hand is higher than the other? And you don't want to live there, but a couple of these measurements will just really help. Now, this arm does not look right at all. So I just want to do my very best to get this thing to work. So sometimes you need a shape. Let's put a shape in. Okay, let's get in this deltoid. So I'm just looking. All right, so breast and then scapula is much higher. This, it's really furthest to the right. She's a really tall model. The torso is very tall. Okay, then it, it angles in over here. Now, her deltoid is up here, which kind of makes sense. And then gravity is going to droop into here. I don't want to press down too hard. And then her, so lean back, lean back. That's a really big elbow, my God. It just, it, when in doubt, go back to the technique that you, not me, you like the most. So I don't like the angles the most, but they're my go-to technique when I'm trying to figure something out uh, because they're, they're kind of no frills. They, they work for me every time when I, when I do the angles, okay? So you see here what I've done is I've just um, put in a little bit of shape. I'm not pressing down so, so very hard. Um, still not right, but I'll get it. Um, no doubt. It just needs to be much bigger. It's a really awkward shape. So I'm going to go back to continuous line. I want to get that angle of her arm very much tilted. This forearm, once again, let me just kind of get this for you guys. Then it angles down. So I, it needed more height. And this comes right up to the top. So that's what was missing a little bit right here. And then it, you know, sometimes the body just makes really funky shapes. It, it does. It's so strange. I mean, if you do enough life drawing and you draw enough people, and sometimes these models get into really crazy poses. You start to really understand that uh, 
the body can do some really weird contortion type things. Um, so that arm is, I wouldn't call it super awkward, but it's pretty big. So now what you need to do and what I need to do is there's this phrase in life drawing and it's called size relationships. So you just need to take more of a, um, thank you, Aries. You, you, you need to take more of a, a, a simple approach to figure drawing sometimes. It's, it's just more of a commonsensical approach and that commonsensical approach is Okay, I'm drawing this arm right now. Is it as big as her upper leg? It should not be because the way that we're designed uh, is our upper legs are bigger than our upper arms. And so that's what I mean about more of a commonsensical approach. And I, I see this all the time in the critique gallery at drawingtutorialsonline.com where I'll look at a figure drawing and I, I immediately see, I'm like, okay, there's not, there's not a chance that that arm can be that big in real life. So it, as you're drawing, you just need to be very commonsensical about it. And like, is that arm as big as her upper leg? That just can't be. I, I know my measurements are wrong. So I can see how thick this leg is compared to how thick that arm is. Uh, but again, you take into consideration how things get contorted. And sometimes the figure just gets into these strange positions. Let me resharpen. Okay, and let me... Um, I want to add, it's, it's very hard to see, but she has her collarbone here, bumps out, and then the chest swings down, and then the breast angles out. So I need that, and I'm looking at the distance from her collarbone to the edge of her um, scapula area. So now, once again, let's get the neck. So I'm revisiting this, the neck angles, the line that separates angles, and then it curves around the cylindrical part of her neck. Beautiful, okay? Now, she has a great shadow on her jawbone, okay? And that shadow comes down. So I'm looking at the distance from the edge of her chin to the edge of her neck. So this is now, I, I'm, I'm not even really doing figure drawing right now. What I'm doing is I'm simply drawing abstract shapes of light and shadow. And you have to trick your mind into thinking that way. Okay, so there needs to be more distance from her collarbone to the bottom of her jaw. You guys see that? So I'm going to lift up her jaw. Cool. And I'm going to move it over to the right, and that jaw comes up very high. So it's just the modeling factors are happening over there. So you see the, the line that I drew for her chin is wrong. Not a problem. So we lifted up the jaw because we put the collarbone in, and now her face is gonna... So if I'm drawing this off camera, and my paper is down, so you see how I'm lifting my arms up, and they go up and they up, and you see my hands now in the camera? So that's above my heart, okay? So I don't like to have my hands, I'm trying to do this, and I don't like to have my hands above my heart when I draw, I like to have my hands below my heart, because when they're above my heart, I feel as though my hands start to, um, it, yeah, not as much blood circulates. If you're holding your, your arm up above your heart for hours and you're drawing, you, you just lose a little circulation. So I, I like to have my hands a, a little bit lower than my heart when, when I work. Um, just a side note thing. So now I moved her face over. That is so much better. So this line now, I can conceivably visualize it connecting with the back of her head over here if I was going to draw that. And if I was going to put tone in, no big deal. I don't even have to erase that part of her face. Okay, so I hope this is helping you guys. Let's see, how, how far are we into this live stream? 53 minutes. So this one is actually lots of fun for me. Uh, I love drawing the figure. Uh, sure, I love portraits too, but the figure is really what I feel that I'm best at. And uh, this is far from my best right now, but I'm having fun. And sometimes that's all that matters. Now, look at the distance between her chest near her collarbone and the edge of her wrist. So I, I might want to make that. I'll use a little bit of my artistic license, and I'm going to make her hand slash wrist a little bit skinnier. So you don't have to copy exactly. 
Now, where is the elbow in relationship to the navel? It's a little bit higher. Cool. Good. So now what I can do is throw in the model and factors right over here. I'm holding my pencil differently because I want to press down really light. A little tone over here. I'm not separating her arm. I'm just suggesting it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of background tone in over here so that arm blends into the background. I want the torso to come in front of the arm. Okay, and uh, let's erase this out now, the mistake lines on her face. So in an hour, this is called a block-in. So we've blocked in the figure in an hour. Could you do it faster than the hour? Sure you could. Um, it, it's all about what is your goal for this particular drawing. What is your style? What do you see? I just started, I used my nail and I just started picking at that, which is a big mistake. I don't know why I do that, but um, how much time do you have to draw? That's going to dictate what you do in the hour, okay? Then you combine that with thinking about, well, what's my style? I, is this a practice drawing or do I want to do a finished piece? And uh, those, those things are really important. So for me, this is an educational drawing. It, it's, uh, it's also practice. Laugh out loud, I just gave her feet like a Sasquatch, so listen to Matt. Step back every once in a while. Yeah, step back. Uh, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> Sasquatch, got to love it. Nancy, um, where did you grow up? Where, where do you live now? Just curious, because we use a lot of the same terminologies. And um, when, did, when did you graduate? I'm, I'm not looking for your whole life story. I, I apologize for putting you on the spot here on YouTube, but... I'm just curious because a lot of the, the terminologies that you use are what I use. And I graduated from high school in the uh, 1986, in the 80s. I was a, a teenager in the 80s, which I think is just perfect. Um, but I'm curious about yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to go a little bit darker now over here with this. This was a lot of fun. So her elbow is a top plane, that bony protrusion is catching a ton of light. Let me erase this out. This eraser is terrible. So remember with the cola erase erasers, they dry out. Ottawa, Canada. Oh, how dare you? Those Ottawa senators. Oh my God. They always beat the Islanders. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, but the Ottawa senators lost they're good defensemen, so I feel bad for them that he left. Just trying to match values. Straight up and down pencil stroke. This is so far from my heart. Um, it's way above my heart, which I don't want to live there with my pencil. I want to bring this drawing down. Maybe I'm going to do that right now. Let me drop this thing because it is way too high very far away from me. Cool. Does anybody have any questions about what I've showed you here today? Okay. I would love to um, answer any questions that you guys have. So far, the one, uh, I got two recommendations for the live streams. One was to do a landscape, and the other one was to do facial expressions which I would find very difficult to do in, in an hour. So I don't know if I'm going to do that here on the live stream um, unless I pre-draw, but I don't know if you guys would think that's cheating or I don't think you would like the pre-draw. Yeah, that wrist seems so thick to me. It's crazy thick. So now I'm just going to kind of block in some tone. This would be our modeling factors. This would be our dark half tone. So the leg is tilted. My pencil strokes are going to tilt. So it just syncs up quite nicely with the block in shading. So you see what I'm trying to do? I'm not using the brush on this drawing. I'm just trying to keep it fresh. 
Yeah, drawing long is fun. <laughs> Especially today, we have a rainy day here, so um, it's a great day to draw because tomorrow's going to be super nice out, and so I won't feel so guilty uh, going outside tomorrow. Now, I need to make a decision about this hip. I'm going to try a different eraser just for fun. I like this eraser so much. Do I need to get the likeness of the reference when I do this type of practice or not? So, okay, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So if you, if you want to get the likeness and that is one of your goals, like you want to do portraits, you want to do the figure, you want to draw things and you want it to look like what you are drawing, well then try to keep a likeness in your mind every single time that you draw something. But in class, what I'll do with my students is I have them do just, uh, we isolate certain techniques. So I'll say, okay, in this one, just draw the figure with a rough skeleton. Okay, the next two minute sketch, just draw the figure with um, the angles. And the next one, just draw it with the opposite C's. So it's, it's really, really good to isolate certain techniques. And when you isolate those techniques, um, so when you draw the rough skeleton, uh, you can say, all right, I'm, I want to kind of get the proportions of this figure in terms of the height with the rough skeleton. For me personally, I, I like the likeness. I, I feel as though it keeps my skills very sharp. Uh, but no, the answer to your question is no. You do not have to um, try and get a likeness every single time. So I'm not using my other brushes, but I am using this big brush it, it, it just, I can just tap. You see what I'm doing? I'm just tapping. It softens everything up. And uh, now it's kind of ready for the taking. I can kind of go back in. Um, from the Philippines, beautiful. Yeah, I remember when I was in grade school, um, I, I wish I could remember his name. His name was so cool. He was this tall guy. He, he, he joined my grade school in seventh grade. And uh, he was from the Philippines, and he was... Um, such a nice guy. Uh, I remember his name, Nicholas Cam Cam. Such a cool guy. And then I think I had a girlfriend in high school for all but a month from the Philippines. And, um, yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, so I'm not quite sure where to take this thing. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just refine some line. And if, if I wanted to, I, I could just kind of block in her legs. So I want to put, so you see what I'm doing here with her legs? I'm just doing shape. Just doing shape. Not worried about anything major right now. So that, that's going to help me determine whether or not those legs are in proportion to. I'm still not in love with the arm up top. I'm just not giving it enough attention. Ileana. For the live stream subject, could you show us your Photoshop techniques like brushes and blending edges? Okay, I could try to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Would I consider myself a digital painter? Not really. Are there people that kick my butt in digital painting? You better believe they do. Uh, but I, I could maybe try that. Yeah, no doubt about it. What I'd like to do one day, and I, you know, I'd like to bring one of these drawings into Photoshop and actually paint it. I, I think that's how I would show you uh, the brushes and, and the blending. No doubt about it. Um, I do have that one course, Ileana, on the website, and it is um, the digital painting course of the figure. And basically the way that I digital paint is I... Is I digital paint like I'm drawing. And uh, I don't use a lot of fancy brushes, but you might want to watch that course in, in the meantime. Uh, it's an older version of Photoshop, but it works because the brushes are still the same, even though it's an older version. Okay, so let me just kind of do a little bit of refinement. Get rid of, keep our lights light, keep our shadow shadow. This could maybe drop down a little bit. Yep. So I'm going to try now to go on top of some of these edge lines. 
and make them look a wee bit more complicated. But this line here, see how it's wrapping around her leg? That will describe her leg as being a cylindrical shape. So it's important to have these lines. Yeah, I would love to do a landscape one. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do that next week. Next week, I'm going to plan for it. Next week, we're going to do a landscape. Okay, so we're. I think I'm going to call this one quits for today. Uh, maybe I'll spend like five more minutes on it to answer, um, <laughs> like Bob Ross, answer a couple more questions. Let's do that. If you guys have any other questions, so I'm going to definitely do a, lan uh, a landscape uh, next week. Um, if, if you guys want me to push this a little bit more, I'm more than happy to. I'm, I'm okay sitting in this chair right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fix some of my mistakes and fix the edge line. So it just is going to require more looking. So now what I can do, guys, is just come on down. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do a landscape. The, her right arm seems to have more of a flat angle. You mean over here, Michael? Her right arm. Yeah, it, it is. I, I would say that I, I worked on that arm the least. And it's an, it's a, when you just stare at that arm, it looks really awkward. So maybe what I can do is I, I can try to resolve that after I do this line um, that separates. So I want to focus a little bit more on this. This needs to kick out. I keep making this lower and lower and lower. We can lift that up. So this is, for me, very important. Just kind of going through this. I'm being a little bit more aggressive with it. There's beautiful modeling factors on her. No light underneath here. It's all lower abs turning under. Uh, definitely very stylized over there. I'm just trying to be a little bit more pronounced so you guys can see what I'm up to. Flat muscle area. Let me resharpen. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely do... Uh, I, I did do a live stream about... We're going on almost two months ago now, over two months of how to draw trees. It was on Zoom when I, that was my first live stream maybe. I would do an overall landscape. I talk about the perspective. I talk about the value structure, uh, all that really fun stuff. Uh, Cause when a lot of people uh, do landscapes, they don't do enough with value structure. I'm trying to draw with you, and boy, it looks weird to narrow the chest left out line. Uh, okay, wait. I'm trying to draw with you, and boy, it looks weird too narrow across the chest. Yeah, th she's she's tough. She she's tough, no doubt. Um, where's my eraser? So the, it, the thing with this is just the more you do, the better you get. It's, it's, that's a little frustrating, but at the same time, it kind of um, is not so frustrating because you know you just need to draw that 10, 15 minutes a day, and this will become, start to become much more natural for you. And, yeah, let's do a little bit more shading over here. There's all these cool cast shadows from other things casting shadows on this statue over here. I could add, so I, I, I could 
add marble texture and play with it that way. Let me grab the brush again. Just tap. Now I'm going to use this eraser to pull out some of my mistakes. And then when I erase it, when, when I brush off the eraser crumbs, that's going to act as a blender as well, which is so cool. So I'm going to lighten all of this, pressing down super duper hard. Okay, top plane over here, underneath the navel, erase, press down really hard. Uh, this neck, collarbone area, collarbone mainly, press down really hard. I don't want the legs as light as her torso. Over here, I could pull out on the top on the top with this eraser. Please tell us again what kind of brush that is. So the only brushes I've used so far today is this big flat house painting Bristol brush. Um, it's I got it from a hardware store. I didn't buy it from an art supply store, although they have them there. And I just use this to brush eraser crumbs off as well as to uh, blend. It's really good. And this thing, is a brush that I haven't used today, but it is just a Faber-Castell eraser brush, pen, pencil thing, and I uh, love this. I never used it much, but uh, it's pretty good. Okay, so now I, I erased out. Okay, so now she looks a little fresher. So I'm trying to keep my Light's light, and my shadow's shadowy. Um, Aries, I do critiques in the member area of drawingtutorialsonline.com every Monday, and that's my entire Monday. I critique all day. It takes me all day to do film the critiques, edit the critiques, post them onto the website, and do a member-only podcast where I answer people's questions there. And then I also do critiques uh, with coaching students who sign up for the coaching. And that's, uh, that's all the critiquing that I do. I never really critique anybody's work on social media because then I would, my life would be critiquing. Um, I've been asked, a lot of people will just send me like 12 drawings on Facebook. And they're like, could you critique these? And I'm like, okay, could you mow my lawn? <laughs> so I try not to um, critique on Facebook and social media sites just because of, of time. I mean, I have a number of people that are paying me money to do the coaching, and they're most important to me, as well as the members of, of DTO. Um, I, I critique every Monday there. So what, what I could suggest is it's the barrier to entry to get your artwork critiqued is, and I never do these live streams. This is not about promoting my website. That's the last thing I want this website to, to be. Uh, this live stream to be is about promotion. That would really stink. Uh, but what I can say is this. Um, join for one month and then cancel at day 29. You could get four critiques, one a week, and I will critique your work there. Um, so it, it's just, it's a, it's a management, it's a lifestyle management thing for me where you just have to set boundaries. Um, and all of you guys, uh, who want to be artists, you all have to set your own boundaries because when you want to be an artist, um, the, the biggest thing that is going to uh, be a, an obstacle is this thing called distractions, okay? So you, uh, it's really important that you manage uh, people interrupting you and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I would... Aries, I'd love to look at your artwork. Sign up for a month, and a month is 19 bucks. So that's why I said that the barrier uh, to entry is extremely low. And then, uh, so it's really, when you think of it, it's 20 bucks a month, right? So you, you join just for one month, and then you cancel. And basically, you've gotten your work critiqued for uh, five Starbucks coffees or 
four star Starbucks coffees, which is totally worth it when you think of it that way. Uh, just uh, pulling out some of the lights. You know, the other thing that I want to say here, um, Matt, I put a drawing on critique, but no comments. Well, did you, um, was this last Monday? Because I, 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 I saw your drawing, but I only, Aurora, so if you put your drawing in, I only critique one day a week, which is Monday. Um, so uh, the next critique is going to be in two days on, on Monday, and I post the critiques on Monday night. So maybe you put it there and I didn't get to it yet, because uh, Monday is the day that, that I film, um, and Monday night is the, the time that I post. In the winter time, when it gets dark at, at 4.30 in the afternoon, sometimes I'll critique on Sunday night, um, and I, but I still post only on Monday. Okay, cool. So I think I want to kick her, her chin in just a wee bit more. Um, so the erasing part is the fun part. I have to be careful. So I need this cast shadow over here. Um, yeah, again, it's... Uh, you have to look, Aurora. I remember distinctly critiquing your artwork. Go to the go log into the website. Go to the member blog. Um, look at the critiques. The one if it wasn't if it was two weeks ago, look for the the member critique from two weeks ago, and then look for your name underneath the video, uh, because I distinctly remember critiquing your piece. It was pretty cool. So just some triangular shapes up top over here. Okay, and let me just resolve this arm a wee bit more because I just kept it more of like a block. So from the breast comes this line that separates the upper arm from the lower arm. Not, Don't make it a straight line, make it a curved line. There's a really cool reflected light. Curve this. I think I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's most definitely just go back in the member critiques and it should be there. You just have to maybe look for it a little bit. So how are we doing, guys? How much longer do you want me to spend on this? Somebody give me a heads up. Just softening this, just add in some modeling factors. Very light over here at the wrist. Yeah, it's um, what you need to practice is this. See how I'm going very light? Go very light um, and develop your what I like to call it's your lover's touch. Very soft touch with the pencil. So over here, very soft touch. But you see how my hand is on the paper? So you need to take the, the weight of your arm and put it on the paper. That's how you're going to be able to... Um, yeah, 11.30, we'll cut it off at 11.30, okay? That, that's cool. Ten more minutes would be great. And so, uh, let's see, do a little bit more of center line over here. Look at the distance from the breast to the edge of the body. Okay. Let's curve around. This is the bottom of the breast. I'm actually having a hard time seeing it. So what we have right now is just very a basic light and shade. So if I was going to spend a lot more time on this, now it's about rendering. And rendering just basically means you're going to try to make it look um, more three-dimensional. My question was completely off topic. Sorry. Uh, Ruka, where was your que question? Maybe I missed it because... Um, let me scroll back up. Um, 
Ruka, Ruka. What kind of music do you like to listen while drawing? Oh, okay. So I, I like everything. Um, right now, uh, so I, I go from like hard rock to, you know, pop music. I, I, I kind of listen to everything. Right now, I'm kind of obsessed with um, this album by Lana Del Rey, and her album is titled, um, I, I don't want to curse, but Norman Effin Rockwell. Uh, and it's 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 very quiet. It's very mellow, um, but she's got a really good voice, and I, and I like the album. Um, I never really listened to Lana Del Rey before a month ago, but I tend to over listen to things. So I find something that I like, and then I I listen to it to the point of um, I can't listen to it anymore. I I love um, the band uh, from England. They're a young band, Daughter. Uh, and then I like, you know, rock from the 70s um, a lot because that's what I used to listen to as a young kid when my parents used to have an AM, FM radio in their car and I'd be driving around with them in the back seat and I'd listen to all that um, 70s rock. And so I like that. So I'm, I'm all over the place. Definitely all over the place. That would be a good topic of conversation. Um, I, I would like to actually have music playing on right now, but there was a couple people who did live streams. There's this photographer that I check out. He did a live stream, and in the photography studio, he had music playing, and YouTube took down the live stream because it was violating somebody's copyright. So now I can start to slowly but surely add some detail into the lights. We separate the abs from the oblique. This is an underplane, so this starts to turn under from that rib. That starts to turn under. This is pretty dark over here. And it could be slightly higher. I'm just doing a circular pencil stroke. Uh, darker over here. This is the dark half tone. Yeah, you should definitely check out that album. It's it's the, the reason why I clicked on it. It was the craziest title. And sometimes I'll listen to um, people that I, I really like. And spot. I listen to music primarily on Spotify. So if you want to check out who I listen to and you go on Spotify... Uh, I know there's a couple people that um, found some of my playlists on Spotify, and I usually play a lot of that music in the classroom as well. So when we draw in the classroom, I always have music on, always, um, for a multitude of reasons. But it's just it's very important for me to have music in the classroom because there there are some young students. So I I teach 18 year olds, and um, some of them don't really enjoy figure drawing. So I try to make it as uh, pleasurable as possible for them. And sometimes I'll ask them what they listen to. And it was funny. I had a whole bunch of um, students from China, and I had students from uh, South Korea. And so I started, I just typed in, like, in Spotify, South Korean music, and I started playing whatever came up. And they're like, oh, my God, that's what my parents would be listening to. So it was, I got a good laugh out of them. It was very funny. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of doing a dark half tone right where the line that separates the light from the shadow is a little bit of a center line over here I'm just trying to soften some stuff it's such a sharp crisp light on the breast area I'm not doing too much in the ways of um, form lines because I'm not really seeing too many of them right now. So you listen to Spotify too. Okay, cool. So I, I, I have a ton of cool playlists. I Lately, what I've been doing a lot of as I draw, and I'll probably do it after this maybe, or I'll film um, part of this a little bit more for the website, How do you decide if it's a good idea to darken the background? Meta 103. 
So that is a wonderful question. And the short answer is time. How much time do you have? Okay. Um, now, if you go to my live stream from last week, last week's live stream was a thousand percent about backgrounds and how to do backgrounds in a portrait. So y you might want to watch that later today uh, because I talk about backgrounds there. But for this particular drawing, um, would I do a dark background? No, absolutely not. Just because it's pencil, it would take me forever to do that. Um, so it's, it's all about time. I might join your online class someday. Haha, <laughs> right now I can't busy school work, study in dental tech. Cool. Yeah, the dentist scares the crap out of me. One day my time will be due in the dentist chair and I hope that day never comes. Just getting rid of white on her upper leg near the hip uh, because her arm is slightly, there's some residual cast shadow. This knee is not as white as the other knee. So we're gonna use it as a frame. This knee should be sharper. I don't wanna to go too sharp at the bottom. The easiest part is giving me the most troubles right up top over here with his breast. I don't understand. This arm, if I wanted to make it look smaller, I can erase out the outline. And it all of a sudden just goes into the background now. Do you guys see that? So it's important to not outline everything equally. So you see how I have the outline on her right elbow a little, her left elbow a little bit more dark because I want it to come forward. But her right forearm, I just lightened that and I want that to go back. Yeah, Meta 103, definitely. Um, how can apply for a grant or a grand uh, to your drawing class? Going to put a little bit of background tone in over here. A little bit of background tone is really important. I don't, I don't know if I understand that question 100%. A little bit of background tone over here will make that kind of go into the background. Her, I want this hip to really pop out. So I'm going to, I'm being stylized now with this. I'm pressing down really hard, but I'm okay with that. I, I like stylized line. Very cool dark half tone line over here. So what I might do, even though Facebook hates anything nude, and this is a nude statue, so who knows, maybe they'll, they'll block me. I live on Long Island in New York. So Long Island is this little skinny island about um, right next to Manhattan, but I live 70 miles away from Manhattan. So uh, there's, I think, a couple of four counties on Long Island. Yep, thank you. Yeah, check that one out. So um, my town is called the Gateway to the Hamptons. So everyone that goes to Southampton, uh, East Hampton, uh, all of the Hamptons, Hampton Bays, West Hampton, has to drive through my town. And um, in the summertime, it is so cool. Uh, you get to see like so many cool cars on the road. Like there's Ferraris and Porsches and all old collector cars. And it's a lot of people coming from Manhattan and driving to the Hamptons. So in the summertime, uh, it's very busy here, but in the wintertime, it, it dies down tremendously. So it takes me 
on the train, because I, I would never drive into Manhattan. That would be crazy. It takes me in the, on the train like an hour and 20 minutes on the train itself to get into Manhattan. But I live a, a little further away from Manhattan than that because there's door to door. We don't like to talk about door to door. That's kind of sacrilegious. You never want to talk from about how long it takes you door to door. Okay, so I'm just going to resolve this a little bit. It's really helpful to relax your drawings to keep part of them looking unfinished. So I hesitate to do much here with that foot. Yeah, exactly. They really have issues, um, Facebook, with so many things. And um, so I'll, I'll try. It's a statue. I do, I used to listen to the news when I would draw, and um, it's just, I don't anymore because it's just so toxic, and, um, but I used to, no doubt, and, and I used to also listen to tons and tons and tons of audiobooks. I have a whole collection of audiobooks that I would listen to. I used to do that all the time in my 20s and my 30s. Um, and I got, a, I, I feel as though I got like a full um, education in certain topics by drawing and painting for many, many hours and, and listening to audiobooks. And uh, so I, I go through phases. Right now, I'm more into music. But the news right now is just so toxic that I try not to listen to it that much anymore. So I'm just kind of starting to shade values in a little bit more subtly. Uh, places I've worked the least, the feet, the arm, um, worked the most, the torso. When I stop and I get up, when I'm done with this live stream, I'm sure I'll see 14 million different mistakes. Any other questions before we call this one? Her face needs to be tilted more and the neck needs to be less wide. I'll do that. I'll, I'll make those adjustments after. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much for watching today. I, I hope that you learned something from watching today's um, live stream. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, relaxed a little bit midway through and just started to do a really fun drawing. Um, I might work on it a little bit afterwards. I might do a live stream on Facebook with this just while I have the camera set up. It's just easy for me to do that. And um, yeah, you got it, Luke. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Aurora. Uh, Ruka, check out my Spotify. If you go on there, um, you'll see who I listen to. I, yeah, I tend to listen to the same people over and over and over again on there. Thank you, Nancy. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, Ileana, thank you. And check out that course, Ileana, of uh, the digital painting. Um, on the website. It's under Painting Tutorials Online. Vivian, thank you for uh, joining us here today. C. Morsha, Moisha, thank you. Michael, thank you. Have a good day over there in Germany. Say hello. I'll see you guys. It was really a pleasure doing this today. Have a great day. Thank you, Phoenix. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Aurora and Aura. Thank you, Marie. Say hello to the cats. <laughs> this would be our museum class, Marie. Maybe I'll see you over on Facebook in a little bit. All right. Have a great day, guys. Uh, just look for my name on Spotify. And you, I, yeah, good question. But I think it's just my name. Let me see. Let me get my iPad. Um, yeah, I live on Spotify all day when uh, home. I don't even know where I would find me 
on Spotify, quite frankly. I'm in my library, home. Click on, it's just uh, my name, Matthew Archambo. If you look for that, maybe you'll see some of the things that I listen to. Thank you, Anna. I really do appreciate that. And I will see you on Tuesday with some new fresh drawings to talk about on Zoom. I had a good Zoom meeting with another student in Seattle. It worked out really good. Uh, I was drawing like this and doing screen share, so it was awesome. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Have a great day.